I'm a
It's, so you, instead of every seven minutes, you do it in and out. Good morning. How is everyone? Nice. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, my name is Monica Roach, and this is a, a lesson workshop session on pixel art and how to use Google Sheets. Um, the presentation has been shared in SCED already, so if you want to go there, you can access it there. But you also turn this on. A conference if we didn't have technical difficulties, right? Okay. There we go. All right. If you'd like to go ahead and get a copy of the presentation right now, if you haven't gone through SCED, you can go ahead and type in this rebranding and you'll get your own copy of it. I would recommend that you go ahead and do this if you haven't already. Um, we are, I'm planning on this being. Not a lot of me talking, more of us practicing and doing and getting our hands in there and, and getting into it. Um, so, does anybody need this again? I'll leave it up there for a second. Are we good to go? Anybody still working on getting this in? Okay. All right, so my name is Monica Roach. I am an instructional technology <laughs> specialist at Burdnick Elementary School in Virginia Beach. Um, I would love to connect with you on Twitter, and there is my email if you would like to um, reach out and have any questions after today's session. I'm completely open to people emailing me and asking questions. I've jumped on Google Meets to help people you know, figure this stuff out too. So um, completely open to you reaching out if you need to. Um, I am presenting this again this afternoon at 445. So if there was one session at 11 that you were like, ooh, I just can't decide which one to go to, if that one's only being offered once, my feelings won't be hurt if you go to that one. Just come back. <laughs> All right, so our session goals for today. Um, our first one is to be able to create a pixel art activity from scratch. I also would like for you to be able to understand basic conditional formatting. And then also understand how to share these pixel art activities with your students. It works um, beautifully with whatever your LMS is, whether you use Google Classroom, Schoology, Canvas. Um, in our district, we've used all of the above, or we are moving to in the next year. So um, it, it works pretty well with any of these LMSs. So what is pixel art? What you're looking at here are three different examples of types of pixel art that I have created. Um, you can keep it very basic, or you can make it pretty complicated and very detailed. The top one is a fractions activity where when the students fill in the correct answer, it self-checks and it fills in a color. So if they got the answer correct, you can see that it fills in the color where their answer was in. And then it also fills in some color here in the art as well. The one underneath is a matching activity, and so they would match the letter with the number and then it creates basically just a maze. And then the one on the far right, this is one that has drop down menus where the students can select from a list of options. Um, I thought that was really a fantastic idea. And then I realized, wait a minute, my kids are just going through. And if they don't get the first answer right, they just go and collect the next one. And then they go and click the next one. So it's OK to begin with. But then once they kind of figure that out, that's all they really, really do. So. Um, but it is an option if that's something that you would like to, to have them do. So why would you want to use pixel art? Well, for teachers, um, it's great because the kids get immediate feedback on every answer every single time. Um, it is self-checking, so if they don't get an answer correct, they know that something's missing in that picture, and then they know they need to go back and look at one of their <coughs> answers that doesn't fill in with color um, and go back and check that one. It's just one less stack of papers that you need to take home to grade. Um, if you're a classroom teacher, you know that that's <laughs> quite overwhelming at times. It's excellent for um, any kind of extension activity, any kind of remediation. Um, my special ed students absolutely love this. They don't want to sit down and practice their multiplication facts, you know, on paper or with flashcards. But if I give them a pixel art, they will zip right through it and they're excited to do it. Um, you can use it as a station activity. 
It's great for K through 12 um, and any content area as well. Music, art, electives, PE, um, math, science, anything can use pixel art. Students love it, again, because they get immediate feedback um, on every answer every single time. It self-checks. They love the mystery of it. They love trying to figure out, ooh, what's this picture going to create when I type in my answers? And some of them, it's so funny, I had one little boy last week. He was like, oh, this is going to be a rabbit. I just know it's going to be a rabbit. It ended up being like a sloth. And he was like, what is that? Well, you know, it's another opportunity to say, well, this is a sloth, and this is the animal. And no, um, they really love the, the mystery of it. It's not just another boring worksheet either. Um, it really gets them engaged and actively into what you're teaching them. Self-paced so they don't have to feel like, oh, that person's already done, I've got to hurry up and go through it. Everybody's working on their own computer at the same time, or even at different times, that's the beauty of it. And plus, it's just fun for them. Um, so let's go ahead and get started in it. There is a blank template that you are welcome to use that I've already kind of um, formatted for you. Um, but if you would like to go ahead and start with a blank one, you can go ahead and open up Google Sheets and you can start from there. The first thing that you need to do is adjust the size of your cells and of your columns so that you end up with squares. I like to make mine um, with smaller squares, but if that is just too small for you, you can make them as large as you want to. It just makes a bigger picture. Um, when you do merge your cells, for your questions and your answers. You wanna make sure any formatting that you wanna do, whether it's text um, font or text color, the size of your font, if you wanna border around those cells, now is the time to do that. Because then you can use your paint tool to very quickly copy and replicate those cells over and over and over again. So I know I'm going through this fast. The presentation, however, does have um, some GIFs and some videos throughout it so that when you go home, I know I've done this a million times, I've gone to a conference, I'm like, oh, that's great. I don't remember what they said. So I've got GIFs that come up and we'll show you step by step how to go through it. So if it seems a little bit repetitive, it is on intentional so that you can go home and come back and access it again. So adjusting your cell size is pretty simple. Um, there is a white box in the top left hand corner, you click there. It will select all of the shell cells in the sheet. And then you can left click and drag the column lines and the row lines to get the size that you need it to be. Um, typically, I will just adjust the column size. I don't do too much with the row size. So I'll make them smaller, skinnier, and not longer, if that makes sense. Once you've got the size that you want, again, you want to select all of your cells and you're going to use your paint format tool. I didn't realize I had, before I started doing pixel art, I didn't have a lot of experience with Google Sheets. I did not realize what a beautiful thing this paint tool, the paint format tool is. It's that little roller brush up in the top left hand corner. When you click on it, um, it will whatever you've selected your cells, it will copy everything about those cells. And then immediately you can just duplicate it. It makes things so quick and easy when you want to replicate things. And then you can add on as many cells as you need to. You'll just click in that last column or row where you want it to go, and then it will add on more cells and more cells. Okay, so creating your art. You can do this um, many different ways. You can do things just from your own imagination. When I first started doing this, I, I was doing it just from my own thoughts and imagination, and I was doing very basic um, shapes or pictures, that kind of thing. And then when I realized, oh, wait a minute, there's like this whole other world out there, <laughs> these amazing pixel arts, um, I got a little bit more detailed in things. So you can keep it basic. You can make it extravagant. It's completely up to you and whatever your comfort level with this is. I'm going to be completely transparent with you. When you're first starting off with pixel art, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. It might seem a little overwhelming. You might think, oh my gosh, this is just taking forever. But I promise once you get into it and you get into that routine, it goes so much smoother. Um, you can get patterns from Pinterest. Perler bead patterns are great. Cross stitch patterns are wonderful as well. This Pinterest, um, I actually have a board on Pinterest where I save a bunch of pixel art inspiration ideas. 
you are welcome to click on that. And uh, I mean, there's a ton of them there. You can just scroll through and pull any of them that you think would be great that your students might enjoy. So when you're going to create your image, you can go ahead and um, black background wasn't the best one to choose for this one, but I was trying to be festive. So you'll go ahead and fill in your background. You can see on the left, I already have my um, cells formatted for my questions and my answers. So you go in and you just select the cells that you want to be a particular color. And you're going to use your paint fill, the little bucket up here with it's pouring the paint. You're going to use your paint fill tool to fill in the colors that you want. You can select more than one cell at a time by holding down that control key and clicking, um, left clicking or dragging through the cells that you want to turn that color. And then you select the color you want and it will change the color. Um, I get kind of particular about my shades of color sometimes, and sometimes I can't find just that right one in the basic um, palette that they have. So this website is fantastic. It has so many different shades um, of color and you just copy the hex code and you copy it before you paste it into when you're formatting that cell for the color. Super easy to do. Um, and I can show you how to do that once we get into like the hands-on part of this. I know I'm going fast, but I really want you guys to have more time actually in it working with it. Okay, conditional formatting. This is where all of the magic happens um, with your pixel art. So there is one formula that you're going to use for your pixel art. Um, and it is, you have equal sign, dollar, column, dollar sign, row equals the correct answer. That's not what you actually type, that's just what you put in for your formula. So an example would be equals dollar sign L dollar sign two equals eight. That's what your actual conditional formatting formula would look like. Um, and when you are doing your conditional formatting, you can have more than one color that fills in on your picture at one time. So um, once you get into more complicated designs or you've got something that has a ton of colors on it, you definitely wanna have more colors fill in as the kids put in their answers. Okay, this is where it gets really detailed. So to do the conditional formatting, I'm not sure why my video is not showing up, but you will find it. Um, step by step, you're gonna select whatever cell you want to format. You then will click on format in the top um, toolbar, and <coughs> come down to conditional formatting. Another box, oh, here it comes. Another box is gonna pop up over on the right for your conditional formatting. And then you'll scroll down to um, formula rules and you select custom formula is. And that is going to be in this little box here. That's where you type in that equals dollar sign column, dollar sign row equals correct answer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a big difference. Um, so from here, this is where you're going to go ahead and select the color that you want those um, cells to fill in as. And you can see that first cell here that also changed to green once I have the correct answer in there. So I've selected my color. If it's a dark color, this will probably loop. So if it's a dark color that you're putting your correct answer in on, you also, I highly recommend that you change that text color to white. Because sometimes once the kids put the, the answer in, it's really hard to see that contrast. Like if it's a navy blue or a dark purple, or even if you want black to be filled in, if the text is black, they're not gonna be able to see what answer got put in. Um, and that maybe that's just a way that I like to do it. Maybe that doesn't matter, wouldn't matter to you or to your kids, but for me, I like seeing what answer they actually put in. Um, so once you've got that, you're going to add that to You're going to click add a range. So we go to conditional formatting. Give it a second to catch up. We're going to put in our conditional formatting rule. Open the formula. Select our color. Um, right here under the green, where I select that green color, there is an A for the text color. That's where you change that. Once I've got all of that selected, I'm going to scroll back up in that same window there 
to apply to range. I'm going to click that grid. Then I'm going to add another range. I like to move this over so that I can see what I'm selecting. Hold that control key down and left click on any of those cells that you want to fill in with that one color of green, that one shade. Once you've got that, this is super, super important. You're going to, before you click on um, OK, you want to come up here and click Reset right here. And that will take out the color on those cells. The reason why we do that is so that once you're going back in and, and formatting more cells of that color, you're not duplicating on top of ones that you've already formatted. Sometimes it's easy to get lost if you don't do that. It's easy to get lost on, oh, wait, did I format that cell? Did I not format that cell? So that's a great, um, great thing to do. Once you've done that, you click OK, you can click Done, and you've got that one cell um, formatted, and you're good to go with the rest of them. Any questions on this part? Because this is super detailed. Do you have anything in the chat? Are we good? There was a uh, possible like a link to your the full link to your slideshow in the chat. Somewhere. Okay, I'll drop that in before we um, leave today. Yeah, totally. Okay. So sharing with students, it's super easy. You click on that green share button. Um, you're going to get the link. You want to make sure this is changed to anyone with the link or when I'm sharing it with students at school, I, click, I change it to people in Virginia Beach. Um, it depends on how your district has your security settings set up. Um, I do not want to just copy the link um, that's there. I want to force a copy to my students. If you don't force that copy, you probably already know this. Somebody's going to go in and they're going to start messing with your design and then you're going to lose stuff and then you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what happened? I worked so hard. So make sure you share that forced copy link with your students. Um, just a few tips and tricks before we start jumping into practice with this. Um, when you are sharing with your students, you want to make sure some people like to do this, some people don't. I prefer to remove the grid lines out. I just think it looks a little bit more clean um, and not quite so uh, clunky, I guess, is the best way to describe a, a spreadsheet. Um, this is super, super important. When you are sharing it with your students, um, you will already have things formatted and you'll have the correct answers in there. Please go through and delete those correct answers out. Otherwise, you share out a sheet that's already got the answers and they already know what the picture is and they're like, what's the point? <laughs> so make sure you get those, those correct answers deleted out before you get going. Sometimes it just makes it look a little bit cleaner and more professional if you add that border around it. Um, you can put in a background color if you want. You would want to remove any extra rows and columns from your sheet as well, just to make the file a little bit smaller and it won't take so long for it to load. There is a fantastic group on Facebook called Pixel Art Mysteries and Education. Um, this is a group of educators. It's a, it's a fairly new group, but it has grown so much in the last year. Um, people will post things that they share, things that they've created. The people who created the group, um, they post things all the time. They have some amazing ideas and um, activities there as well. Um, and you might want to consider creating a Google site to house any of the creations that you make. I've done this for my school um, and I, my teachers know that they can just go to this website anytime if there's an activity there. It forces a copy to them, it saves to their drive, and then they can share it out with their students. It's good to go. So this will show you how to remove grid lines if you're not sure how to do that as well. So let's practice. If you've got this, um, you will want to go ahead and pull up that candy cane. Um, it's going to bring up the image, that the one that I was working on in all of the GIFs and videos. So if you want to um, practice conditional formatting, that's going to be the place where you can do that. If you want to completely start from scratch, you are welcome to use that template that I shared in one of those very first slides. Um, it's already formatted down to the smaller cells. But you can go in and practice merging cells, um, putting the border on, changing your font, creating your image, and then practice your conditional formatting there as well. So we have about 40 minutes left. Um, I would love for this to be a time where you just begin working on it, and I'm here to answer questions and walk you through it and help troubleshoot anything. It can be a little complicated the first time you do this. Um, so there is that. I also have an exit ticket. If you would just take a few minutes at some point in time, it's linked in the slideshow. 
Um, if you would just go ahead and take a minute and fill that out, that'd be awesome as well. So I'm just going to let you do what you need to do. I'm here to help. <laughs> you can just say, hey, Monica, and I'll come over. Or if you want to raise your hand, that's fine too. Yes. I didn't see the the question, so that's where you. Um, yeah. So did you just type in the questions and then merge the cells? So, that so she asked a great question. She was like, on that candy cane one where you already had the questions mm -hmm. in, um, how did I put the questions in? So the first thing I did was I merged my cells together. Let me pull it up and show you how we did this. How we did that. Okay, so if I want to come in and add a new question over here, I'm going to left click in a cell and then I can drag those over um, and you can see up at the top where the columns are labeled A, O, A, P, A, Q. If I have it selected, it turns to a darker shade of gray. So once I have as many columns as I want, I'm then going to come down a couple of rows. So then I have, it will outline my cells that I'm going to merge. Okay. My merge tool is, here it is. It's going to be the two, um, they look like brackets with the arrows pointing. So I'm just going to click that. And then if I change my fill color to white, you can see that now I have one box where I can put that in. It's a good question. So then if I want to duplicate that, I can just click on this one box. I would go ahead and format the text and the font and the color and borders and all that kind of stuff. Go ahead and format that and then use that paint tool, that, that paint format, the roller. Click on that. Come down. And then when I click, it automatically will paste that cell formatted the same already. Yeah, you're welcome. Did they want the link to the presentation? Yeah, they wanted the link to the presentation. Okay. Um, somebody had the link to the link. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll add that right now. <laughs> I feel like I should have music playing or something. <laughs> No, I'm just kind of copy it. Yeah, okay. yeah. There are ways that you can take an image, but it, it requires uh, so many steps, and it makes it super complicated. I feel right. like right. Um, I try to keep things just as basic as possible. Right. Um, so it it does take a little bit of time. Yeah. But like I said, once you get into it, it goes quicker. Yeah, it goes much quicker. <laughs> Good. No. Good. Okay. How can I help? <laughs> And then my brain is processing different applications other than what you're using mm -hmm. to recommend your teachers. I'm just thinking about doing how it fits in college. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's what she, thank you for saying that. One thing I didn't remember to tell you guys is that once, um, once the kids get into it and they 
um, kind of understand the concept of what's going on, you can actually teach them how to do very basic pixel art. Let them design their own images and stuff, and they love that. I haven't gotten to that point with any of our students yet, um, but we're going to get there. <laughs> That's a great idea. What age would you do that with? I would probably do that maybe with, um, if I'm in elementary school, I'd probably do it with my third through fifth graders. That middle school and high school. Oh, sure. definitely. They could definitely do that. So if you wanted to do that as an extension activity or, you know. That's what I'm looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if you took like, so I taught world history too before I jumped into the ITS world um, at, the, at the secondary level. So um, I would use this almost as like a create your own test review or if you're, you know, reviewing for SOLs, you, this group can work on this unit, this group can work on this unit, and then everybody can share and see each other's work and collaborate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to borrow you for just a minute. All right, so I'm the bad student. I'm so bad I'm still getting Am I doing something wrong? Huh. Um, so I didn't put in the bit.ly when it came up. So I tried to start forming on my own, but I couldn't uh -huh. make your example. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, let me go back and read the video. Yeah, absolutely. Change the question. Ah, you know my neighbor mean? has it for me. Thank oh, you. Good. Okay, sure. All right, I'm slow. <laughs> I'm a snapper. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. No, Thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. What's that? Do you start to get like a library of them? Yeah, right. Yeah, we so, to make a, like, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, you make a library of them and then just let them, you know. Are you doing that one? Did you join the Facebook group? Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> 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 Christmas show. Christmas <laughs> yeah. 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 Tutorials posted on how you can put the answers on a second sheet of the sh of the spreadsheet, of the Google sheet. You put the answers in white, and you like kind of hide it down really low, and then it, it will talk back and forth. I haven't done that yet, um, but yeah, there is a way because kids do figure out. Oh, I, I just type this in. They're smart. Well, they figure it out. Just, they earned it in that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But yeah, there is a way. Okay. Yes. It could be the internet. Huh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me double check. Maybe I have my two settings wrong. <laughs> 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 <laugh
because it's because it's within your district. district. Yeah, but I think usually with um, sites, you should be able to change who yeah. can access it. I've created like breakout rooms for family engagement nights. Um, we're Title One school, so we have a lot of those. So we've done breakout rooms using Google Sites, and then our parents who aren't in the district have been able to access it. So I probably just <laughs> <laughs> change that setting. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. You know, when you're getting ready to represent, like you always, you lay in bed the night before and you think, okay, I've got this. Is that work, link working? Is that one working? Do I have everything set right? <laughs> and then it never fails. <laughs> There's always something, right? I'm kind of sorry for my first class of the day. Right, because they had all the mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And you always want to tell them, oh, thanks for being my my guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> What's an ice scraper? And then when you're on the clock, you Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll don't worry about it. You can always post the link later to the skin. That's true. Yeah. yeah. We should just never know how to say that. <laughs> I want to stay easy. here just so I can see it. <laughs> oh, okay. There we yeah. go. Okay. So the, the um, site that I created for my teachers, those should be that should be fixed so that now you can go back and you should be able to access that now. Yep. Oh, yay! Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. You guys are my guinea pigs. <laughs> You try to send some I'll away. Just my way towards the very spot. Oh, wow, these ones are really complex. And some, yeah, I mean, if you so if you're on the website, um, my website, if you go to fourth grade multiplication facts, those are the ones that I first like. There's um, it's either zero through 12 or one through 12. Those are the ones that I very first started off making, and they are so simple and basic, which is fine, right? It's totally fine. But then, like as I got more custom, um, comfortable with it and accustomed to how it worked, I was able to kind of get into some of those more um, complicated. These uh, Star Wars ones are so cute. The which one? The Star Wars one. Oh my. Okay, so honestly, if you scroll through the Pinterest board, my I have two daughters. I have a fourth grader and a first grader. Fourth grader obsessed with Harry Potter. The first grader obsessed with Star Wars. So I have so many different templates of things that I know that they're into, so that I can share those with. With them and make them practice oh you're doing context clues oh let's here can you test this out for mommy and see if it's working and my fourth grader is like oh yeah mom so anything that you click on in there we don't have access to it so we just have to request access um in, it in my should be, I go. Yeah. Oh, okay it's amazing let me go back and look at it it might be i know that our district has just recently changed some of our security settings on things um, and I'm finding, like, even when I go into that Facebook group, some of the people I can access their stuff and some of them I can't. Yeah. So I'll do a little bit of investigating. Um, if you want to just shoot me an email, say, hey, Monica, just so I don't um, Yeah, shoot me an email, and then I'll I'll do a little bit of investigating on that. And if you can get it fixed. Thank you. Yeah, you're, of course. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, so um, do you have your cells for your, yes. So click on this. The teal square, and then you're going to click on the map. And then, yep. and then you have a little And then click on the little drop down menu and come all the way down to cut the You're going to type in the value of formula, and it's going to be equals. Cool. 
it's going to be dollar sign. And when you're putting in your format, C is the column to touch right there. Oh, thank you. All right, cool. Sorry. Her website. Um, in the capital D. Yeah. Cool. And then dollar sign. Yeah, well, we'll get it. Yeah, like 23. I can't do it. Equals. And let's just format everything to one. And then once you know what your answers are going to be, you can go back and change that number. So you would just take one. Is that one of the ones from school? And then it still works. And if you want to change it to the text you like, you can. Yeah. If you don't want to, that's fine. For the bus. The text for when they type number one um, in the box. Yeah. <coughs> Sometimes on darker colors, it looks better with the white. It's just that A right beside it. So they couldn't watch yeah. the movie because you're probably just going to So then you'll play. No, <laughs> that, that was easy. 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 That this was just yeah. on any of the random ones that you want to do, or if you want to do the whole thing. I'm sorry, so one, do my 9 11 that one. Yep. So then they can have multiple questions, like teal. Yes, they have one. Yeah. So before you click OK, it comes up to your right now. And she's like, oh, okay. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, so I take it. Yeah. And then look at it. Yeah. I was like, go. Go. And then she's like, this is the most hanging ever. Okay. Now click OK. And then you click. So, when you type the line here, they should turn to you. Start fresh, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's go back to the What did you say? So I can do that. Oh, I can do this. Shoot, Wednesday. Well, when we're back on Thursday because it's not. <laughs> Stop jinxing us. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed that sometimes it takes a minute for it to kind of. Wednesday. Yeah, we got one to yeah. be out for the rest of the week, yeah. not just one day. <laughs> we might be out a couple of days at one to three. <laughs> um, another tip for you guys as you're working through this um, you know when we moved when the pandemic hit and we moved into virtual world many of us worked off of two screens so if you still have those two screens available to you um, I have found that oftentimes having the pattern that I'm looking basing my art off of on my laptop and then on my larger screen I have my actual sheet that I'm working on um, I also will enlarge that view I will increase that view from 75% or 90% up to 200. So that way I can really see, I can get really detailed and see exactly which cells I'm clicking on and that sort of thing. So just another tip for you. Yeah. Okay. Can I, um, okay. Thank you. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You. Thanks Thank for coming. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email me. You know, do you have the access to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So same thing. Yeah. And just my husband and I would just laugh. We're like, okay, we just stay home.
There we go. I think we had the wrong. We looked at our formula. I don't remember us having um, AQ in as our oh, no. column. I think we were on D. Yeah, but it's good to know. So. Okay. And how, um, how did you know what to put the that for AQ? the cell? Yeah. Um, so let's just click on this one here. I was a mystery. Yeah. So right here, this tells me okay. AQ, and then the, the the row is thirty five. So that's where I get those. My columns. There's, okay. Yeah. There's no way you can figure it out. Yeah. What it is. Right. Thank you. On the website, on my yeah. high school website. Yeah. yeah, another way you pointed that out to me. I'm going to go back and do some investigating and see. Our research has recently changed a lot of settings. Okay. So I might um, have to get some stuff fixed that way. Okay. But um, I'll definitely, if you want to shoot me an email and I can let you know when it's set okay. and good to go, it's totally fine. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, yeah, you're I like looking at those as the example. It's really nice. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thanks. What's that that they're looking at? So if you scroll down. Your last the tips and tricks page. Yeah, you have a oh, this is my so tool gotcha. website where I, I <laughs> will oftentimes come in and um, it's, it's broken down by grade level, level and content. Okay. Um, it also yes. has like a video on how to assign. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Mario. Yeah. <laughs> Mario says. <laughs> Ladies, thanks for coming to the US. Yeah. the instruction was trying to get my place, and then I was I think it to be one color, but so um everything is gonna be slightly square. You don't have anything like perfectly round. Right. Um, and also, I've noticed, like in some of the ones you you know, like they have like a line or something, you won't necessarily be able to see that it's kind of line. Mm -hmm. um, but you can definitely do diagonal lines with this movie if you're trying to sit in. You don't. So, um, one thing I like to do, right, right. I mean, this with computer, it's not a little bit larger, so I'll click on that one to move to the <laughs> How are you still doing your own eyes? your click on. Okay. Um, so then when I'm ready to start creating a revived image, 
I usually will come over a little bit and give myself a little bit of space. Just plug in any cell that you um, And then you can come up here to your paint fill and fill up the color that you like. And then if you have more than one cell that you want to do that color, uh -huh. hold down your control key. And then you will um, click or drag for all of the cells that you want to have that color. Okay, and you could come down to the next row if you've got more. So you could come over here and do another one. So have to go back. So then you'll click on your. No, it's amazing. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think it's wonderful. So I was trying to think about like what kids use in these, like because mm -hmm. I would want them to do it with pixel art. Right, to actually create. Yeah, yeah. and I was mm -hmm. thinking about different programs. Like right now, I do a lot of Wix mm -hmm. art with my students. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, this could be something that would be great for if you're looking to do certain concepts that you come up with. I do nothing about I can paint, but I know nothing about <laughs> Right. But so I was thinking like pointillism, <laughs> because they do, like, there's some artists that use dots to mm -hmm. make their art so we could kind of modify it or even, yeah. Um, but I still would like that I can kind of work this way, even. Like Legos now, so mm -hmm. it's in part with the little Legos that they can make pieces. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you go to print Pinterest and you have like your ideas here, mm -hmm. you just like copy it and then drag it into yeah. it. So there's not an easy way to do that. Um, what I do is I will have one of them on one screen on my laptop screen and we have my tab on, and then on my second larger screen, that's where I'm actually working on my sheet. Uh -huh. um, and I just go through and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this shortcut symbol. I'll left click and drag for however many over and down I need. And then I'll kind of change it. And then um, so that's just how I. So you can't just copy and paste. You still have to recreate it. This is just kind of like giving you the space. Right. right. There is, I mean, there are ways that you can do that, but I think it gets super complicated and it's multi stuff. And, um, yeah, you like the pixel for them, like they would just have something that you could just copy and use. Yeah. Like these are really cool. So you have to develop your own these. Well, I didn't create these. These are ones that I found on um, some of the larger ones, or ones that I found on um, Pinterest. Oh, not Pinterest, sorry, in that Facebook group. Okay. And I was able to just make a copy of it, and then I can put it to show my order on my site. So we just kind of keep, I don't think we want to use these anymore. Yeah, yeah. Great thing here. He's great though. Yeah. Your music teacher would be Yeah, well, for this one, I'm going to ask you. Just give it everyone. Facebook. Now I know why they told us to bring it into the table. Right. So, um, really just getting the idea of what you want to work with. Don't understand how the internet moves. Thank you. Um, you're Thank you. welcome. If you've got any questions, please feel Thank free to email. Appreciate yeah, it. you're welcome. Uh, I, I ended up clipping. I never understand. I wouldn't Oh, Oh, I see. Thank you. That was for me. No. <laughs> it's the spatial like the arts. <laughs> Like this, I'm trying to look something last year. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Oh, that's awesome. And so I. Yeah, so I just want to look. It wasn't open. And then. I think it was the other place that was really close. Okay, yeah. And then, like, my kids were really close. The one to right across the bridge. Right, Virginia. So cool. If you've got any, please feel free to reach out. Okay. I'm happy to know she wants to meet or whatever. Appreciate it. Yeah, so really I'm Thanks for coming. Thank you. Your Facebook and copy and paste until I felt mm -hmm. proficient in making my own. That would be great. Well, honestly, um, I've learned so much from that group. On yeah, like I said, if, um, you go to fourth grade uh -huh. um, and click on go scroll down to mom. All of these are the very first ones that I created, and it is so simple and basic. Um, well, that's okay. our, yeah, our district has recently changed some security yeah. settings, so but I mean you can tell from here. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. so um, 
But then once I joined that group, I was like, oh my gosh, these things are amazing. And so I really took the time. And one of the ladies in here, she even took the time to create a couple videos for me, personalized to me and my questions. I'm so sorry. I'm so I love to just pay it for It's a part of a kind of assistant. And I can tell you, I love the idea. I tried the slideshow. And I saw the image for I'm not going to lie. 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 Um, um, once you get to the so I have a whole of I have a whole bunch of blocks of fun. I have a whole bunch of I have a whole bunch of fun. 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 I have a whole so I laid out a and now that I do it, they won't take a few minutes to me to do it. Yeah. No, so for this, um, one of the Yeah, yeah. I just I'm like the the last one who's in before you was like. I mean, they're they're doing a great job and everything, but it's like a little transition. I mean, they were good about it. Oh, I know. I was so worried about that. That's time I was like, I know. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to email me, I'll okay. share that with you directly. Um, and just shoot me an email, say, hey, my district is blocked for granny, and I'll definitely. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Um, it's MC at BBC's, and then the second one is our rose. Is that how? Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then, Yep, McDonald's, but McRoach. I got it, thank you. When I taught high school, they were the ones that pointed that out. They were like, hey, you know your email is like McRoach, right? I was like, cool. Thanks, I appreciate that. Move on. Do you think you want to try this? I like spring it out the door. Okay. Perfect. Like half of it, trying to do it. Okay. 
All right, so my people out there in virtual land, we are about to wrap things up here. So um, if you've got any last minute questions, you can go ahead and post them in the chat. Um, or you can feel free to email me and um, I'll answer your questions that way. You also um, don't forget to submit that exit ticket that's in the presentation as well. Thanks so much for coming. Huh?